Here is Simon Tennant, a coder and entrepreneur from South Africa, currently living in Berlin and working in Berlin. And uh, Simon will speak about messaging apps and why is it uh, why it's good to make them open source, I guess. Great. Welcome, Simon. Thanks. So, um, yeah, I, I'm working with a team called BuddyCloud. We build an open source messaging stack. So that means if, you, if you're building a mobile app or a web app and you want your users to connect with each other, then we give you the open source tools to make that super, super easy. Um, and we started with a secret. Um, this talk is really about keeping your secret secret. Um, I have this idea that um, a lot of political power comes from from secrets, and certainly the Snowden um, exposures recently have, have shown that. Um, so today, I want us to sort of imagine that we're building this perfect system and how we would build it. Like, if, if we wanted to build a perfect sharing system for social, um, what, what would need to go into that? Um, because if, we say, if we're thinking, like, information is power, then Every time you're giving out information, you're helping somebody else become more powerful. And that's probably not a good thing. So to, to get us in the mood, I, I was thinking about my uncle. This guy um, has some really, really interesting stories. You know, he, he writes about the time that he was fighting in Angola against the Swapo rebels, and he, he's very descriptive. He'll sort of talk about the time when he's walking along in the, in the jungle, and he steps down, and you hear the like click of the, the landmine, and then how they have to, like everybody drops to the ground, and they have to dig the landmine out from underneath somebody. But the problem is where he's writing this. So he'll be writing this <laughs> on a platform. And we all know what happens with a lot of these platforms. They come and go. So I was thinking about like alternative platforms that he could put some of his stuff on. But the, the history here is not very good. Um, I think it was recently that the case that archive.org had to rescue Ju risk of GeoCities because they were sort of shutting down and all this history was getting lost. Um, so it sort of brings us to this model that everybody's building on these days. This is what I like to call the, the trust us security model. And it's basically like everybody puts their information into the middle. And I think we know the problem with this. Um, when you have a lot of information contact, uh, concentrated in one place, you end up with problems like PRISM, for example. Um, and that's just sort of the tip of the iceberg. I can imagine a future sa situation where we've got um, things like your insurance companies looking for, for this information. Um, also, information is, is concentrated, and it's not always available to good people. And perhaps in the future, you know, um, your, your future employer is also sort of looking at this information. So we all know the problems here. Um, a friend of mine described this as a build your own trap system. And so we want to try and avoid that. So tonight when we're thinking about how do we reinvent messaging, let's try and avoid this sort of build your own trap problems. So to think about the design of this new system. So we've got this one system where you push everything into the middle. Um, I wanted to ask a question. There, there's an app that's probably on everybody's phone um, that designs this sort of infrastructure completely differently. Any guesses what this app is? It's probably installed on most people's phones. Somebody said it. Email, yes. This is an app that's essentially 30 years old, and it's such a great design. Um, why is it a great design? Because it sort of looks something like that. And it's, it's not a centralized system. And it works really well. And everybody's using it. And, we, and yet we're living in a world where if I was on, let's use Gmail, and somebody else is on Hotmail, I'm not installing the Hotmail app to send them a message. And yet in the messaging world, today we're doing that. Today it's like, oh, you're on Threema, and I'm on WhatsApp, and somebody else is on. You're running around with all of these apps. And yet we've solved this problem really, really well. So why is this a good way to design? So it's a good way to design because it's, it's really a distributed target. So in the previous slide, we had PRISM, the, the PRISM program sort of focusing on all the information in one point. Now we've got a distributed target. So it's not a question of somebody walking up to your door and sa giving you a national security letter and saying, Psh, don't tell anybody about this. Um, it's, it's a case of you know, a whole lot of providers 
um, needing to be targets. That's not to say they won't be targets, but it's, it's far more difficult to, to target a bunch of providers with stuff that's slightly outside what we would accept as the normal process of law. Um, the other good reason is because of provider choice. So some people here will use Gmail, um, and that's a choice that we make because we, we favor e ease of use over privacy. Other people will run their own email services. And I'm not the person to stand up here and judge anybody for that, but I think that the, the having this choice is super, super powerful. So when we're imagining our future wonderful messaging system, um, I think that this provider choice is super important. And certain companies, certain organizations really like to run this on-premise behind their firewall, stuff like that. Um, and finally, there's something that I, I've put down here as political distribution, but that really means that you know you choose which political jurisdiction you decide to keep your data under. So some, sometimes this is Iceland, sometimes this is North America. Um, it really depends on, on your sort of feelings about this. But I think that the, the, the most important thing here is the choice. So email's done quite well. I thought we'd make a quick little scorecard. It's certainly easy, you can run it yourself, it's distributed, but it really fails on the security side. It, it does a super bad job. I mean, if you, if you figure like any email between two large providers, probably 99% of the time, it's going through in clear text, it's being siphoned up. So we know that we have to fix this. Um, I've put end-to-end -end crypto down there, but I think the only person that's using it is Ingo, loyally sending me messages. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a sad state of affairs that we, we still haven't got end-to-end -end right in this case. And it's certainly affordable. It is 30 years old, so you know if you're a developer and you want to start building super cool new social systems or messaging systems, email's probably not the right way to go. Um, so yeah, now we come back to our design and putting everything together, we kind of got this idea that, you know, people are doing stuff with social, messaging's big, um, we've got the design of email, and so what we've really tried to do is combine the security side, the encryption side, and give it a little brush of modern to, to make um, a new system. And so that's what we've really um, done with the Buddy Cloud open source messaging system. And it looks something like this. Um, basically, there's a whole lot of Lost audio? Yeah. There's a whole lot of components that join together to give you a social stack. Um, and that means that as a developer, you can, you can combine these systems together and, and sort of mix and match. So it's, it's really not a one-size-fits-all, but it's a bunch of, of tools that you use to get messaging. Um, and then the other cool thing about, about, um, about email is that you've got this federation aspect. So your friends on one company can talk to friends on another company, Gmail can talk to Hotmail. And the same way, we, we've got that sorted out. Each of these sites can federate to each other. Um, so without looking at diagrams, we've got something that sort of looks like, um, like an activity feed. Um, but the point is, this is just one implementation. Like we think that um, we have to put a few implementations out there. Some people will build messaging apps with it. Some people are building uh, secure end-to-end -end communication tools with it. Um, in fact, some people are even building something for um, construction sites to, to add messaging to, 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 so that the electricians can talk to the plumbers. Um, yeah, so today we have something that looks like this. Basically, we have a very transparent development <coughs> process. Um, it's an open source project. Obviously, you can see the code, you can adapt the code, you can see why we're making certain decisions. Um, we've also tried to bake a sort of easy to understand privacy model into the system. I don't know how many of you have sort of struggled with your Facebook privacy settings, but it's something that I'm continuously bumping up against, and every time I go back, I find that there's new options and new things are now open. So we've tried to bake this right into the core that, that you, stuff is either just um, open or it's private. Um, yeah, federation is there, end-to-end -end crypto is there, it's optional, like there's, there's definitely a trade-off between end-to-end um, -end encrypt crypto and things like group conversation, it becomes much more difficult. Um, and now, right now we've, we've published the protocol and we're working with standards organizations to, 
to make this more widely adopted. So how do we get this deployed? Well, the deployment looks something like this. We've sort of gone through these different phases of technology. And I like to think that secure communication, secure communication is sort of the next step after social. Um, and so that's sort of what we're working on right now. Um, the cool part about this is actually having people using it. So one of the, the fun projects that we, we worked on recently was um, this with this guy, Alan Not Craig. So he, he runs a team out in South Africa, and they do free Wi-Fi for people living in the townships. Um, so these people are, they're not walking around with laptops, they're not walking around with iPads, but their phone is their connection to the rest of the world. And it's usually on a very, very low data contract. Um, and, and they have a lot of time. They have a, they have a huge amount of free time. Um, and he asked us, you know, the government wants to better understand how people or, or what people are doing, what sort of problems people perceive with society. Um, could we build a messaging app to, to help with this? Um, so we, we flew down to South Africa and started talking to people in the townships and then also um, working with the team there to build a quick little messaging app. Um, by quick, I mean we, we managed to do this in 10 days. So it was very, very fast. But um, it was also very interesting. Um, we encountered a lot of problems, um, not least of which was the sort of frequent power outages. Um, but the part I liked about it most was actually getting something shipped and getting real people using it and communicating with the government. So this is slightly different from um, protecting your information from the government. It's really about communicating with the government. Um, but it was also a, a fun project that sort of demonstrated that, that you can build um, solutions that are um, open source using an open framework. Um, and we've also published everything as open source on GitHub. Um, and now some other projects have forked it and are starting to use it. So yeah, um, basically our next steps so are we're going to continue working um, continue releasing this as open source um, and working with organizations that need privacy. We actually find out that there's been this sort of approach that um, you know you stick everything in the cloud, but it really turns out that there's, there's many organizations that are, um, have very, very strong privacy needs. Um, there are also organizations that, that sometimes try to, um, try to invade privacy. So for example, um, one of the organizations that somebody else is working with using the BuddyCloud stack is actually one of the security services because they identify that this is, this is very private. Um, yeah, and we're going to keep rolling out demo apps similar to the one we did in South Africa. Um, and that's a very, very quick introduction to BuddyCloud and to um, building messaging that's hopefully a little bit more secure than a lot of the solutions out there. Um, so if there's any questions, um, I'd be very happy to take them. All right, and thanks a lot uh, for introducing that uh, interesting project. Uh, I guess you're quite open to feedback, and I can imagine there's some questions or comments on the development.